concerned about in the play was getting that last scene right with the three wives, the three women in the play, Billy Dee's wife, and then, and then of course, Lois and Ann, um, which, which is a scene for Janet, uh, which is the first al meeting. And we know that, that Lois and Ann did go on and, and began what is now known as al -Anon. I loved that scene. I have had the privilege of being able to see a rehearsal, and I loved that scene. And al -Anon has been in my life over the years. And, um, and what I want to say up front is that I don't speak for Alcoholics Anonymous or al -Anon. These are only my personal experiences, my personal opinions based on my personal experience, and also what I see in my daily work. So I've come to have a belief that um, you know, alcoholism, the, the alcoholic needs the codependent and vice versa. You know, alcoholism for me is a disease that requires both the person that drinks and the person that tries to save the person that drinks. And um, so, you know, in this day, we now call it the codependent. We use the term enabling and... Um, and what I have come to believe Al-Anon does for the loved ones of alcoholics is helps them to navigate their way through loving an alcoholic. It may mean how to find a way to have their own life and to have their own happiness that's not contingent on whether or not the alcoholic is drinking or not. And it can also uh, help someone navigate how to maybe extract themselves from the life of you know, living in, alcohol, in active alcoholism. So Al-Anon doesn't say leave the alcoholic or stay with the alcoholic. Al-Anon just is there to help you find your way to become happy.